Good morning, New Bethel. This is Pastor Ely. As you can see, we are back in the sanctuary, and I am back behind the pulpit. Listen, it feels so good to be back in the sanctuary and standing behind this sacred desk. Listen, I, I, I need for you to do me a favor this morning. Why don't you tag five people? Go ahead and tag your auntie or your uncle a brother, or sister, someone close to you. Go ahead and tag them right now. That's good. Go ahead. Thank you so much for doing that. And I want to ask you one more thing this morning, and that is to go ahead and share this broadcast. We know you have some family and friends that need to hear this message this morning. So go ahead and share right now. Share or make a watch party invite some some of your closest friends where we can uh worship together amen thank you so much this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it listen i am so happy to be with you this morning and we do have a word from the lord if you have your bibles why don't you look at the book of haggai yeah, Haggai chapter 1, and we're going to concentrate on verses 1 through 5. And then once we finish reading those, we're going to turn over to chapter 2, verses 5 through 6. And the word of God reads, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadat, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house shall be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore thus said the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Chapter 2, verses 5 through 6. According to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear not. For thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Listen, I want to talk to you from the subject purpose, priority, and promises of God. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk to proclaim your word. God, I ask right now that you allow the Holy Spirit to travel over these airways through the internet. God, to touch the hearts and minds of your people. And God, I ask right now that you give me that boldness, that power to preach your gospel right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Purpose, priority, and promises of God. The book of Haggai is an interesting book. It is a book full of prophecy, reassurance, hope, encouragement, achievement, disappointment, glory, correction, direction, blessings, and even fear. Haggai is a prophet of God sent to call God's people back to a work that was started some 25 centuries ago. The task was for his people, the Israelites, to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. 
Haggai is the mouthpiece of God used to move, motivate, and carry out a mandate for his people to get back to completing God's work. The truth be told, we all need a little encouragement every now and then. Let's keep it real. We get off track and sometimes we even miss the mark. And not only do we miss the mark, but we get our priorities confused. I see how one's priorities can be sidetracked because of the demands and the pressures of life, jobs, family, and friends, even school. Yeah, you know, work, uh, research papers, working hard to get through that last semester of school. And you somehow get off track. See, I understand when you're at work, you are focused on completing the task at hand. You, you have projects that need to be completed because it's the last quarter uh, of the year, the last month uh, in that quarter, and the boss want the productivity up. The boss want your numbers to be high so you can get commissions and bonus checks. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then you have uh, families that want you to come to birthday parties, even if they're virtual. Uh, baby showers, recitals, uh, baseball games, uh, basketball games, whatever the case may be, even during this time when we are doing things via computer. And let's not uh, forget graduations during uh, this time. We're using the computer. We take more time to get things done. The bottom line is that we all have things that pull our pri on our priorities. We all have things that will distract us, be it good or bad, be it productive or non-productive, be it beneficial or non-beneficial. The bottom line, it pulls on our time. It pulls on our priorities. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, just let me know that you're still with me. That's it. That's it. That's good. That's good. Right there. I see. I see the comments. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, in the text, I want us to take a look at some uh, possible issues and distractions that caused the Israelites to forget about their purpose, priorities, and promises of God. Throughout this book, we find Haggai preaching a message of encouragement and warning to Zerubbabel and Joshua, who are leaders in rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, they are reminding the Israelites that return from captivity while in Babylon. They were reminding them that, uh, that they were in captivity that they, when they got out of captivity, they were excited to be free and building on the temple. Yes, they were excited to rebuild the temple that King Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed when, when he defeated the southern kingdom of Judah. You see, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar had ordered to burn down uh, the temple of the Lord. He, he had decided to burn down all the buildings in Jerusalem, yeah, and took God's people into captivity. And not only did he take the people uh, of the land, but he also took the silver and gold and some 5,400 valuable articles that belonged in the temple. And see, the excitement and the focus they had in rebuilding the temple is now fading. See, we are um, in a similar situation. We've had some things taken from us 
with this COVID uh, virus. We've had some people to lose wealth because they no longer can work. We've had people to lose relationships. We've lost loved ones. Whatever it is, it has caused your enthusiasm to fade a little bit. See, if I look back at the text, something happened during the time of the returning from Babylon and them building the temple. I said something happened. They lost their enthusiasm for the work of God. And let's be honest. We all have lost a little enthusiasm during this pandemic. Yeah, it might, it might be because uh, you've lost your job. It may be uh, because of sickness have come. Whatever it is, I know that we have lost a little enthusiasm. But I want to encourage you today that you can get that back. Even through all of the setbacks, even through all of the troubles, you can get that back. Matter of fact, I'm reminded in the word of God, it says that man that is born of a woman is of a few days in full of trouble. See, we will experience trouble. We should not concentrate on the trouble. We need to concentrate and be more concerned about how we respond to the trouble. See, Psalms 34 and 17 says that the righteous cry and the Lord hear them and deliver them out of all their troubles. Yeah, I know. I know the word says all. And the meaning of all is all. All means all. Am I right about it? If you believe that, you should type all. All. God is going to deliver us out of all our troubles. Oh, I believe that. I believe that this morning. Anybody else believe that God is going to deliver us out of all our troubles? Well, I want you to be encouraged because we are more than conquerors uh, when we have God on our side. I want you to know right now that you are more than a conqueror. You have the victory. You have the victory in Jesus. See, the race is not given to the swift. I know you're saying that what are the setbacks that the Israelites experience? What caused them to forget about their purpose? One thing I see is that the Israelites were concerned about their homes and their lives. They were concerned about their own welfare and the building of their homes that they forgot about their purpose. Let someone know that they shouldn't forget about their purpose. See, which they, that purpose was to rebuild the temple. That's it. They were to rebuild the temple. It had been some 16 years that had passed since they started rebuilding the temple. Somebody had to say no excuses. You had 16 years. No excuses. You had 16 years. Uh, they had put God on hold. See, uh, you got to check yourself right here. Don't get too hard on the Israelites because some of us have put God on hold and we need to take God off hold. Even during this pandemic time, we need to take God off hold. We still have some work for, for he still has some work for you to do. He's calling someone to speak a word of encouragement to a loved one. He's calling someone to help them battle depression. He's calling someone uh, back to motherhood. He's calling someone back to fatherhood. Yes, he's calling our families back to fellowship, even during this time. He's calling ministers and preachers and lay members to be go beyond these walls to a dying world. He's calling us to look at new ways to get the gospel message out. Am I right about it? Yeah, I know. I know I am. I'm right about it. See, he's calling men, women, and boys and girls to get back to the kingdom work. It's all about kingdom work. 
God is calling us back to purpose during these times. See, not only is he calling us back to purpose, he's calling us to the right priority. Earlier, I told you that uh, something happened and the building of the temple had stopped. The Israelites were concerned about their welfare and their fine homes. And another issue that I see is that they had hostile neighbors when they returned from Babylon. The Samaritans and the other groups had hindered their progress. See, this is what I want you to remember today. Whenever you're working for God and standing for God, persecution will come your way. There's always be something or somebody to stop your progress. But I got good news for you today. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shall condemn. See, how many of you know that when God is for you, he's more than the whole world against you? Ah, someone out to type amen right there. If you believe that, type amen. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I see it. I see it coming in. How many of you know that when God is for you, no one else can be against you? Yeah, the Bible says that uh, he that has begun a good work in you will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. See, the reason why the Samaritans was trying to infiltrate infiltrate and halt and disrupt the work of God is because the Israelites did not want them to help build the temple. So I know you're probably saying, well, why? Why they didn't want them to help rebuild the temple? Well, the Samaritans claim to worship God are the same God as uh, Zerubbabel, but the Israelites uh, had almost kind of, I hate to say, told a lie, but they told uh, the half truth. Uh, And a half truth is like a broken clock. It's right at least two times during the day. See, the Samaritans worship God, but they also worship many other gods. The Samaritans were worshiping the sun, the stars, and the moon. Uh, They were even uh, working with witchcraft and idolatry. You see, the enemy's job is to distract us from our priorities. Also, the enemy wanted to stop you from becoming strong in the Lord. Oh, we can't let that happen because we serve a jealous God. See, Exodus 20 and and 5 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, their God, is a jealous God. See, not only is he jealous, but he wants us to see him, to seek him first. And that's why the word in Matthew 6 and 33 said, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So what are all these things? Anything that you need to make it in this world. See, God can meet your needs. How many of you know that God can meet your needs today? Yes, that's good. Yes, God can meet your needs. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for meeting my needs right now. You are an on-time God. Yes, you are. You are a provider. Yes, you are. How many of you know him as your provider today? That's good. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our provider. See, uh, God is always on time. I know that's right. Yes, do you believe that? Do you believe that God is on time? That's it. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look, the other thing I see in the text is this. I see in verse 4, it says, is it time for you yourselves to be living in panel houses while this house remain a ruin. I know in the text that Haggai is referring to the Lord's temple. Uh, I want you to turn 
the searchlight on your own self. I want you to look at your spiritual house. You see, so often we're concerned about the physical house and our physical needs that we forget about the spiritual needs. And I believe the word says, for what shall it uh, profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Is so anybody's soul in jeopardy right now? See, I don't want your soul to be in jeopardy. We have to seek first those uh, kingdom things. Anybody know anything about kingdom work, kingdom building? That's good. That's good. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, that's good. You see, we can't just be concerned with the physical needs. We have to continue to be concerned with the spiritual needs. Amen? Amen. So in other words, he's saying, consider your ways. So we must seek the Lord while he can be found. That's it. We want to seek him because we're looking for a relationship with him. How many of you need a relationship with God today? Amen. That's good. Yes, we all need a relationship with him. Listen, in order to have a relationship with God, you must first recognize that he died for your sins. How many of you know that he died for your sins? Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. Listen, if you are in the need of a relationship with our Father, um, I want you to do something special for me today. Amen? There is a, a scripture out of Romans 10 and 9, and it simply says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. If you believe that scripture today, I want you to do something special for me right now. That is, I want you to pray this prayer with me. The prayer says, Lord Jesus, I know you love me, for you died on the cross for my sins. Right now, by faith, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Cleanse me and make me whole. Thank you, Lord. For saving my soul. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen if you pray that prayer. Why don't you type the word believe. And let us know that you. Uh, pray this prayer. And you believe it in your heart. Amen. We have. We have uh, workers that are. Manning our website. And social media. And we would like to stay in contact with you if you, say, if you said that prayer. Amen? Listen, God want us to continue to have our, our purpose and our priorities uh, straight with him. And with that, we'll, we can inherit the promises of God. And that is the promises of eternal life. Amen? That's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you enjoyed that message, why don't you just type amen? Amen. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Listen, I will just like for you to continue to support this ministry. Um, you can do that by um, our cash app. We have cash app. Uh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. We have Givelify. Givelify. Amen. 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 Just go to our website and use uh, Givelify, and you can pay your tithes and your offering. 
and you have friends that are watching, you want to sow into this uh, ministry, just go to our website and we will be glad to uh, receive a, a love offering from you at that time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Listen, I am happy to be back in the sanctuary and we look forward to coming back to you again. And But before we can do that, uh, we just want you to continue to share um, this message throughout uh, Facebook and, and other uh, sites that we're on. Amen. Go to YouTube. We're on YouTube as well. Amen. Thank you so much. It's so good to be back in the sanctuary in New Bethel. Listen, well, at this time, we're going to close out in our customary way. And that is Philippians uh, 4 and 8. And it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. God bless you, New Bethel. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen.